What's up everybody, raid testing back in the menu and today we're taking a look at Heroic Remnant of Ner'zhul in the new raid Sanctum of Domination. Keep in mind this is not a guide on how to do the fight as it is very early testing. Things will change, some things aren't working properly, so this is merely to give you all a taste of what to expect. Good old Ner'zhul! One phase fight, ish. As you're smacking the boss he will lose armor pieces and the fight gets progressively harder. Throughout the fight you will have to deal with orbs of torment. These orbs will spam Torment shoots random players with shadow energy which leaves a dot that deals shadow damage every 3 seconds for 15 seconds. When you've nuked an orb down to 1 HP, players can pick it up and attempt to throw it off the platform. However, when you pick up an orb you get inflicted by Thermal Lance, which deals frost damage every 3 seconds and slows your movement speed by 15% and this stacks. So after a few seconds of carrying the orb you will be unable to move, unless you're a shaman and you ghost wolf it. So I know what shamans will be doing this fight. On top of this, the orbs will continue to spam Torment until they've been thrown off the ledge, so DPSing them down only enables you to pick them up. Now the tank mechanic also interacts with these orbs, which is the Blight and Suffering. Boss will cast Blight on the active tank, dealing a chunk of fist damage and leaves a dot that lasts for 6 seconds. The Blighted tank will get a beam between tank and boss, and when Blight expires, boss will fire off Suffering towards the Blighted tank. Target's hit takes a bit of shadow damage and a debuff that increases damage damage taken by suffering by 500%. Now if you hit an orb of torment with suffering, the orb will take 300% increased damage from all sources. Pat away! So you want to make sure this always hits at least one orb. Now to make throwing off the orbs a bit more tricky, boss will debuff players with curse of malevolence, which lasts for up to 21 seconds. The duration of the curse varies with the number of targets hit. For us, we got 2x curses, one at 21 sec duration, one at 18 seconds. So might be at a 30 man raid, you get a third curse at an even shorter duration, and these can be dispelled. Now when this expires, everyone in the raid gets knocked away from that player, and the cursed player gets knocked back as well. On top of this, on Heroic you also leave a pool of lingering malevolence, which deals a ton of ticking damage if you stand in it. So this means depending on timings you have to either hold off on dispelling curses or hold off on picking up slash throwing orbs, since if you pick up an orb you will be slowed to the point where you can't move, unless you're a shaman. But even as a ghost wolfie you still get the stacking dot. So yeah, choices, choices. Most of the time you could just chill with dispelling the curse and deal with the orbs first, but depends a bit on timers. Following this, every now and then boss will also use grasp of malice. Three line spawns that travels into the boss then shoots out out as smaller projectiles, deals damage and knocks you back if you're hit. Ner'zhul also has an aura of spite, which deals ticking shadow damage to everyone in the raid every 3 seconds, and anytime you shatter a piece of armor, which is at 85, 60 and 30% from what I could tell, its damage will increase. And when a shatter happens, aura of spite triggers volleys of shadowy missiles to fire out across the platform. If you get hit by one, you take a large amount of damage and you get silenced. First shatter trigger triggers one wave, second two waves, and third three waves. As for the shatter itself, when a piece of armor is removed, abilities gets empowered. At 85%, two orbs of torment will spawn instead of one. At 60%, the boss will randomly cascade out a few of the swirls that you get when a shatter happens, but a lot fewer swirls. And I'm actually unsure what was changed after the third shatter, as the dungeon journal is pretty lackluster at the moment, and I couldn't really make out what was different. And yeah, that's pretty much the fight. All in all, I really liked this fight, was very engaging as a tank, was a lot of coordination to deal with knockbacks from curses as well as throwing up the orbs, and positioning yourself correctly to not get screwed by getting knocked around the room constantly. Casters probably like this a little less, there are a lot of knockbacks and a lot of movement. But all in all, the fight was very good, very hectic and good interaction between all the mechanics. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this first look. We'll cover all of the bosses on PTR and proper guides will be out once the raid is released. Least. I'm streaming all of the raid testing on PTR, so don't forget to check that out whenever there's raid testing announced. Otherwise, I am streaming all of our main progression once it's live on Mondays and Tuesdays. If you have any questions at all about this encounter, hit me up in the comments or become a patron and get access to the Stanky Discord, where you can get help with anything raiding related. Now don't forget the usual stuff, like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.